Shalom everybody, my name is David Levin, aka Lev King D, and this is the first class music in Kabbalah. Thank you for tuning in, thank you for joining me, and um, God willing, let's, uh, we're going to be learning about the deepest mysteries and secrets of music and Kabbalah and the wisdom of the infinite Torah, Kadosh, with um, the highest level of teaching, which is I mean, it's all high, but the secrets of the Torah, which is the so the the so, um, we know there's four levels of learning: Pshat, Remish, Drash, and Sod, which is an acronym for the Hebrew word Pardes. Um, English word Paradise comes from, but it's the final level, the the the, the hidden, the concealed secrets of the Torah. Just Kabbalah and Zohar and so forth um, we'll be delving into that and God willing try to understand some of the secrets within creation and uh, Hashem will unlock a lot of these mysteries of the universe together within music and Torah so a lot of this stuff is going to be really mind-blowing and uh, some of the stuff might get a little technical for the for the musicians and um, many people could follow along with wisdom of Torah, um, with knowledge of musical scales and and wisdom, but and and hidden esoteric wisdom. God willing, we'll put put it all together. And for those who just don't know and uh, don't know much of either, or we'll try to break it down and understand these these concepts. So um, just a brief introduction. I'm going to be you using different sources um the book that we're going to be following by the order that we're going to be going even though we're going to be using different books but uh i highly recommend this book we're um shout out to rabbi glazerson it's called music in kabbalah and um this is the format which we'll be doing this series and god willing um should give us strength to really understand and uh delve into this um, so I hope everyone enjoys it and here's a brief introduction so when presented with an unfamiliar piece of music a musician will search a page of notes for a sign to inform him to which tempo what tempo is appropriate for that movement is it fast is it slow is it upbeat melancholy grave moderate he will use these terms to set the pace of that song so now suppose you're a musician and the term you're confronted is are you religious, pious, spiritual. At what pace would you set the tune? To me, these terms would be synonymous with lively or joyous or cheerful. Indeed, when a person reflects upon the wondrous beauties of the world in which God has placed us and the constant gifts that shower down from heaven upon our unworthy heads. Once cannot help but burst into joyous songs and praise of the Holy Creator, right? So the Torah itself admonishes us for having served with gladness. When we're not serving with gladness, the Torah con con condemns us a lot. So when you have plenty of everything, you wouldn't serve Hashem, your God with happiness and glad of heart. From the verse we see that one must serve God with joy and gladness always. And that this can include specifically with song. These are countless examples of spiritual giants who use songs as intrinsic parts of their divine connection, worship. The Midrash Rabbah in uh, Parsha's Ve'etzin says that during the 22 years that Yaakov Avinu, our forefather, Yaakov, Jacob, tended Levan's flocks. He praised God with her pleasant songs. The wind carried these areas, these notes with him. For almost 1,000 years, the wind carried these melodies before finally being revealed to King David. And at midnight, he would, uh, he would wake up to sounds of these northern winds playing his harp. 
literally is the wind would, would play the harp, which w was hanging over his head, and he would wake up as, uh, as he writes in Tehillim, I will rise at midnight to praise you. And at midnight, they would wake him up. Thus, our holy king was inspired to compose, David, David was inspired to compose beautiful psalms to the king of kings. And these songs have inspired the whole world for thousands of years. So music's always had the ability to uplift and influence. When asked how he was able to change the lives of so many lost Jews, the eminent luminary, Rabbi Meir Shapiro of Lublin, replied, if one goes to a wedding, he may arrive in a bad mood but the musical band will instantly lift his spirits. He's gonna be right away the simple. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna turn up. He's gonna be happy. He's gonna dance. So, what what Red Motion Shapiro is saying? I carry around the band inside of me all the time. You always gotta have that beautiful song, that live band inside of you, bringing you joy all the time. And that's that's a level to get to. Not getting into that now, but King David said, this is just an intro, we're not getting into the Kabbalah yet, just an intro to the book that Glazerson puts together. King David said in Psalm 100, verse 2, serve God with joy, come before him with song. Let examine what song is and what it could do to fully employ the power and delightful tool in our divine service. So now we will actually jump into the text. And uh, we will start with book one, which will be talking about the musical scale and the seven letter cycle, which is part one. So we know the musical scale is made up of seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. These notes are then repeated on a higher scale and then a higher and a higher and a higher. And then we could go on ad infinitum. Each seven note scale is equal to one cycle so in Judaism, the number seven is significant for several reasons. We know seven is a cycle of many things in Judaism. And one is that there are seven Kabbalistic spheres, which are called spherot. And these spherot are specifically, there's 10 spherot, which is the whole full attributical concept of the spherot. But we're right now focusing on the seven spherot, which are the Kabbalistic spheres, which correspond to the weeks of the Omer, which are the seven emotional and tributical spheres. And um, I'm going to get into the Sfirot for those who are not familiar with the concept of Sfirot. Um, we will talk about that in depth, maybe throughout the year and later shares. And if anyone has any specific questions, they feel free to message me. Um, I will be glad to answer any questions, but right now, let's move on. And they're corresponding to the Omer, which itself is seven weeks of seven days. From Pesach to Shavuot, we count the Omer, which is a combination of all these different Sphero, for we purify the Sphero within ourselves and within all of creation until we reach Shavuot, where we receive the Torah, where we're ready to receive the Torah. And uh, each letter of the Hebrew alphabet is parallel to a different note of the scale. This is very important. Each letter of the Hebrew alphabet is parallel to a different note of the scale, of the musical scale, and hence to the appropriate sphere. Each letter is also connected to its own sphere. Sphirot, all of creation, all of creation is composed of all these spherot, and um, each note corresponds to that spherot. So it's all tied on, it's all tied into one. And each sphere has its own position. There's um, three positions, right, left, and middle, right? Therefore, the corresponding letters of the alphabet and nodes of the scale are in the same position as the complementary sphere. The letter Aleph, the note Do, Do, the first letter and the first note, both being first, are parallel to the sphere of Hesed. Hesed, which is loving kindness, merciful, right hand, the right, it's on our position to the right side. And the Vav, the Re, are parallel to the Gevura, the second note, the Re, 
is par parallel to Gevura, which is strength. Also, people know, uh, our, our Kabbalah scholars out there know that Gevura is also, um, it's strength, it's constriction, it's um, limitation, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's more of a strictness, we could say. But right now, we will speak of Givura as strength, the left side, which is the Gimel. Sorry, I was saying the Vav is the Ray, Paris went to Givura, which is on the left. And now, the, the Gimel, the third letter, and the Mi, the note Mi, corresponds to Teferit beauty, which is placed in the middle and as such represents balance and harmony. We know Tiferet is beauty, it's between Chesed Gevur, it's in the middle, it's har harmonious, it's harmony. Further, the letter Dalid, which is the note Fa, corresponds to the sphera of Netzach. Netzach is the sphera which corresponds to eternity, victory, you know, but specifically right now we're gonna say eternity which is on the back to the right. So it goes in a downward spiral, right, left, middle, right, left, middle, middle. And we'll, we'll continue on. But so the Dalid, which is Fa, corresponds to Netzach, which is on the right. And He, which corresponds to the note Sol, equal to the Sphere of Hod, which is the Sphere of Hod translates to glory, which is on the left. So the Vav, which is the note La, which is Yesod. Yesod, very interesting, is translated to foundation. Yesod is foundation, and it's in the middle. And on this scale, I'm going over the first letters first, and then the Zion. The Zion is T, the note T, which corresponds to the final sphera, which is Malchut, which Malchut translates to kingdom, kingship. And that is the final sphera, and that's also in the middle. So the notes then continue on a higher octave, and the alphabet continues accordingly, right? He equals Do, the Tet, which is to Re, and so on. Hence, each letter of the alphabet relates to a different sphere and is in a specific position. So, again, Chesed, right, Givura, left, Tiferet, middle. Sorry, we got cut off really quick. As I was saying, so we left off where Chesed, right, which is Do, Givura, Re, which is left, back to the middle, Tiferet, which is the note, Mi, Netzach, back to the right, which is the note Fa. Chod, which is the note Sol, back to the left. Yesod, which is the note La, back to the middle. And finally, Malchut, which is the note T. T is back in the middle. T, in the middle. So, um, I know this is getting a little technical and it's like, ah, left, right, left, up. But um, there's all of this I'm going to say for a reason and it's all going to connect. Um, so it is interesting to note that the difference between the major keys and the minor keys is explained through the buildup of tones. In the key, in the minor key, the middle tones, Mi and La, are nearer to the left side, being only a semitone, which is the side representing the heart. Right? Um, also, um, so the Hebrew words for the three positions of the spheres are emsa, yamin, emsa is um, imtza, middle, yamin, right, small, left. And if we take the initials of, the, of, uh, of these words, the first letters of these words, it spells the word Ish, right? Aleph, Yud, Shin, which is, Ish is man in Hebrew. So Ish has a connotation, also it 
course, corresponding to the perfect man. For example, Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, is called Ish HaElokim, the man of God, the perfect man. So consequently, we see that when the middle, right, and left are all put together, they form a perfect combination, even in the musical scale. The spheres also represent um, what I was saying earlier as midot, which are divine attributes, um, through, through which we can, as simple-minded human beings, can understand God's actions and creations. All of creation is set in the this form of spherot, these midot that are set in this scale. And um, God forbid, God doesn't have a body, he doesn't have any form of image or body, but just so we can understand, the great Kabbalists um, revealed the secret of the form of spherot, which correspond to um, even the human body has spherot corresponding to God's body even though God does not have a body again I rephrase what I'm saying God has no body whatsoever he's completely non-physical completely no image can pertain to the infinite creator but just so our basic human minds can understand um, we have we what was set up is this concept of Sfirot and the secrets of Kabbalah reveal these concepts of attributes, midot, through which we understand God's actions and creations, right? And in astrology, the seven midot that we have seen are also parallel to the seven mazalot, which are called the celestial bodies, the planets, the stars, the constellations. Um, all of these things are all connected. So to the planets, um, Jupiter is actually parallel to the sphere of Hesed, um, the first sphere on the right, to the letter Aleph, right? Which we know Aleph, Do, the first note, all of its co correspond. I'm gonna connect this right now. Mars corresponds to Givura, the second sphere. If you wanna write all these down, feel free to do so. The second sphere on the left and to the Vav, the sun, which corresponds to Tiferet, which is in the middle, and to Nun, Venus to Netzach, and to Dalid, Mercury to Chod, and to He, the moon to Yesod, and to Vav. And the earth, finally, the earth, which is the whole purpose of all of this, is corresponding to Malchut and to Zion. The planet-music relationship, we will talk about in a later chapter, or maybe we'll touch on this um, further. So according to the Ramchal, which was uh, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lazaro in the book Adir uh, Ma'aro, um on page 40, he basically said that the planets are moved by musical waves. And these are the words, all those things that are carried out by music, and the luminaries, when they go out from their source, are motivated by music. Each planet has its music. And it is interesting to know, actually, um, recently it's been discovered. It says right here, each planet has its music. And it's interesting to know that recently, scientific studies in the United States of America discovered that each planet produces different melodies. They send out a satellite with a big um, uh, special device that can read sounds coming out from outer space. And they, they focused on each planet and each planet is giving out sequence, different frequencies of musical notes, literally its own melodies singing. It's crazy, as has been seen according to the Ramhal, that it is really the music itself which affects and moves the planets. It is interesting to know too that the Zohar in uh, Exodus Parsha Shlach also says that the constellations themselves create music. So according to the Zohar, Exodus, um, also Parsha's Vayekil, the music of the sun is so wonderful that if the ears of man 
would not be blocked, then he would be capable of hearing this. He, he, uh, he would be capable of hearing this music. If our ears weren't, weren't blocked, we would hear the music from the sun. Um, but he would, however, not be able to exist. We won't be able to exist as his soul would leave the body. The soul would right away shoot out of our body. The Rambam in the book, Guide of the Perplexed, um, in part two, chapter eight, also mentions this and other theories of how the stars create um, different sounds, which is very interesting. You know, we see it in our galaxy and our planets literally singing a tune. So what, what's going on here? It's interesting to note that the major key is the plan of the cycle of the 19 years, which contains seven leap years. Now we're, we're shooting up to the calendar really quick. The seven leap years occur on the third, the sixth, the eighth, the eleventh, the fourteenth, the seventeenth, and the nineteenth years, respectfully. So observing the order of these years, one can notice that they follow the same sequence as the intervals between the notes or tones in the major key. For example, two years correspond to one tone. Um, basically, for example, between the, the note Do and Re, there's a full space, a tone. So when there's only one year difference, this relates to the semitone. For example, the space between the Mi and the Fa. So the level, the, the seven note letter cycle is also parallel to the seven shepherds of uh, Israel. We know we have seven shepherds. Um, these are the same seven shepherds. Um, we just finished Sukkot not too long ago. We had the seven shepherds come um, into our sukkah, into our, our um, or Sukkot, and they they come in as guests, and uh, and they go in this following order: Abraham, first day; Yitzhak, second; Yaakov, third; Moses, uh, fourth; Aaron, fifth; Yosef is the sixth, and David is the seventh. So this order follows that, what, like same as when they come in. Uh, as guests on the seven days of the festival of Sukkot. Um, and each one corresponds to the seven attributes, the seven Sfirot. Um, Abraham corresponds, we know, to Chesed because Abraham was the attribute of kindness, of Chesed, of giving. And, you know, all he did was give. He always wanted guests. He opened his doors and to everyone, to guests, to angels. He tried to go out and try to just find guests and, and, and do good, just do good for people. He, Abraham is um, the attribute of chesed. He connects to that attribute. So corresponding to the note do. Uh, do. And this, uh, this um, Yosef, on the other hand, Yosef whose attribute was uh, Tidkut, righteousness, is the sixth sphere. He connects the sixth par uh, parallel to the note La, which is the sphere of Yesod. Um, as you know, Yosef, of course, uh, was sold as a slave into Egypt and Potiphar's house, and where he was almost seduced by Potiphar's wife, uh, wife, where she tried to seduce him many, many times. And uh, he overcame the challenge. He overcame the challenge and therefore uh, he held his foundation down. Um, as we know, Yesod translates to foundation and also corresponds to different organs in the human body, specifically that one organ. He overcame his lust, his desires, and he held this foundation down. Therefore, he is connected to the attribute of Yesod. And um, we know that Vav, the sixth letter, also represents the Tzaddik, the righteous man. And we know the Tzaddik, who's a Tzaddik? It stands for, it's, the Tzaddik stands for a straight line between heaven and, and earth. 
So this helps us understand the verse in Proverbs 10.25, Tzadik Yisod Olam, that the righteous one is the foundation of the earth, foundation of the world. And indeed, this is very interesting, when a violinist, he tunes his instrument, what note does he tune it to? He tunes it to the note La, which as we've seen represents foundation. Very interesting. He tunes it to the sixth note, and the sixth corresponds to the sphere of Yesod, which is foundation. The last note of the scale, the T, corresponds to the seventh letter of the alphabet, which is the Zion. And what's the seventh day of the week? It's the Shabbat. And these are parallel to the attribute of Malchut, kingship. And Shabbat attests, what is Shabbat? It's the day of rest, and we attest to God's kingdom on earth on this day. And the Jewish people, by when we keep the Shabbat properly, we testify to God um, having created the world in seven days. And this is one reason why one who keeps Shabbat, he's regarded as though he kept all the mitzvot. This is um, quoted from uh, Shemot Rabbah, end of Parsha 25, um, Talmud Yerushalmi, Brachot 9a, chapter 1, law 5. Many different sources. The alphabet continues. So let's continue. It's going to get a little bit technical, but um, I'll try to, if anyone wants to write this down, the alphabet continues above. Zion, as the notes continue on a higher scale. The scale is repeated for a third time to complete the alphabet. The seven notes consist of the letters Aleph to Zion, the second from Chet to Nun, and the last scale from Shin to, uh, sorry, from Samech to Shin. The letter, um, one sec. Um, okay, the letter Sof, Tav, is not represented as it's, as it is one above the number seven. So we know what's one above seven, it's eight. Eight is already out of bounds. It's out of the limited cycle of creation. We know there's six, is there six working days, six days of the week, seventh is Shabbat. It's the gateway between the spiritual and the physical. So all of the physical manifestation works on this um, sequence of seven. And eight is already out of outside, in infinite. It's already out of the bounds of creation. So, again, if you want to go through it one more time, I'm going to go through it really quick. If you want to write it down, um, we're going to go through the notes, and I'll I'll connect to what letters, planets, attributes, which place it is set in, and which shepherd it connects to. Really quick. Um, first note, do corresponds to the Samech, the Chet, and the Aleph. Um, its planet is Jupiter, and the attribute is Chesed. And that's in the right side. So, and it shepherds Avraham. Second note is Re, and it um, corresponds to the Vav, Tet, Ayin, and its planet is Mars, and its attribute is um, Givura. Its sphere is Givura, and it's on the left side, corresponding to Yitzhak, Isaac. So the third note is Mi, and that corresponds to the Nud, the, y the Yud, and the Fe. Um, corresponds to the planet, which is uh, the Sun, actually. It corresponds to the Sun which is attribute, its sphere is Tiferet, and that's right in the middle, corresponding to Yaakov, a.k.a. Israel, Yaakov. The fourth note is Fa, corresponding to Dalit, Chaf, Tzadik, and uh, this correspond, corresponds to the planet Venus, 
And also we have the attribute of Netzach. It's places in the right, corresponding to our shepherd Moses or Moshe. And um, next we have our note, Sol, which corresponds to the He, the Lamed, and the Kuf, and its planet is Mercury. This corresponds to the Sphera of Chod, which is on the left side, corresponding to our shepherd, Aaron. And then we have the La, the note La, which corresponds to the Vav, the Mem, and the Resh, and this corresponds to the Moon, which is corresponding to the attribute of Yesod, the Sphera of Yesod, in the middle, corresponds to our shepherd Yosef or Joseph and um, our final note which is T corresponds to the letters Zion, Nun and Shin which is of course connected to our planet the earth which is in the sphere the attribute of Malchut, kingship, whole purpose of this creation to reveal his kingship in this world and its place is in the middle and it corresponds to David, our shepherd David, Melech Yisrael Chai Vikayam. In the second scale, the same principles apply. So it's the, the second scale, the same thing. The He, which stands for Chaim. Chaim, of course, we know the word Chaim in Hebrew means life. And this signifies the no do in a hierarchy. In the attribute chesed and hence on the right. Um, so Ted stands for Tahara. Tahara means purity in Hebrew. Which is analogous to Re, the note Re. Re and Givura and so on is on the left. Okay, then we have the Yud. The Yud, it matches the Mi, the note Mi and Tiferet, and is in the middle, etc., etc., etc. So, anyone wanted to write those down, I will have a small little graph. Let's try to see if we can get it on camera. Oh, the lighting's really bad with this blue light. It's okay. Um, we see the second scale is of a similar structure to the first. So it's very similar to the first scale. So the last seven letters forming in the third scale are constructed in the same manner. So I'm gonna go through it really quick. We know the Samech corresponds to the first note on the musical scale, Do which is corresponding, of course, we mentioned chesed, which is loving kindness on the right. Ayin, which corresponds to the note re, its attribute is givura, is on the left. Fe, which is the note mi, corresponds to the sphera of tiferet, which is beauty, is in the middle. And tzadik, which corresponds to fa, is netza, uh, yes, tzadik, Fa is Netzach, uh, eternity on the right. Um, Kuf, which corresponds to the note Sol, which is Chod, glory, on the left. And um, Resh, which corresponds to the musical note La, um, corresponds to Yesod, which is the foundation in the middle. And the Shin corresponds to the note T, which again, I tell you, is Malchut, kingship, kingdom, in the middle. So the book, Chafla'a of the Bal Ka'ani, the Bal Hakain, sorry, the Bal Hakain, says that exactly the same insight and uh, erudition which applies to the connecting letters into words, applies to the connecting notes into songs. So it's very interesting. 
Um, next, we're going to bring in the Tikkuna Zohar. And uh, let's see here. it mentions there's three things that music affects. Music affects three things. The Torah, the Shekhinah, and the Geula. The Shekhinah, which is the divine glory, the divine radiance of God. And the Geula is, um, the Geula is the redemption, the redemption of creation, the redemption of the world that we are so praying and hoping for. And these three things in turn are parallel to the mind, heart, and body, those three things, respectfully. Firstly, the Torah represents, what does the Torah represent? The Torah represents Moach, which is the mind, brain. This is because music has the power to open one's mind and improve one's secha. The sechel is uh, mind. In the book Pirkei Chayetzlacha, the Rambam, uh, Rabbi Moshe Ben Maimon, um, from the 15th century, he writes that if a man wants to feel elevated, he should sing. When a man wants to feel elevated, he should sing. Singing has the potency to elevate man as it opens his mind. The Gemara says that one should learn Torah with a tune, with a song. And music, as this aids one's studies, hence one can frequently hear men learning. When you come into yeshiva, what do you hear? It sounds like a, a song for everyone's. And Rabbi Meir said like this, Rabbi Akiva said like that. Is it true? Is it not true? Does he pay a fifth or does he pay a fourth? And the argument, all the arguments that Yeshivot are all saying in song manner, but that's why, because it says that one should study in song, sing song manner. So next, the Shekhinah represents, what does the Shekhinah represent? We talked about the Torah, let's talk about the Shekhinah, God's divine presence, His glory, it represents the Lev, the heart. And the Lev, similarly, the Beit HaMikdash, which was our holy temple in Yerushalayim, represents the heart. So we know I'm a Levite, our fellow, shout out to all my Levites, our, our, our Levites and the prophets, we used, we used to use music in the base of Migdash so that the Shekhinah would descend upon them. So the Shekhinah would descend upon the earth and we would elevate that. And uh, that's that's what we were doing. We we're the musicians in, in, in the, the Beit HaMikdash. So back to, the th uh, so that was the second. And now we'll talk about the third. Thirdly, the Geula. The Geula represents the Kaved. The Kaved represents the liver, right? Which itself represents the goof. Goof is the body in Hebrew. Why the goof? I'll explain later. The kavet actually is liver. So what happens in the liver? It's literally, that's the production, the blood production. I mean, the bump, blood's pumping out of the, the, the heart. But the production of the blood is in the liver. And it's coming through the liver, circulating into his heart, circle, pumping out the left ventricle of his heart into through the brain. And this is the system that the body works on, right? So that's the kavet. The, it's very, the blood, the, uh, the liver corresponds very, it's very body-ish. So it's goof. So it says, the Jewish people were redeemed with music when God took them out of Egypt. As we see in Exodus, um, chapter 14, verse 32. As Moshe uvene Yisrael et chashira hazot l'ashem. Then Moses and the children of Israel chose to sing this song to God. The Torah does not use the verb shar, sing, but rather yashar, will sing. Rashi, Rashi, um, Rabbi Shlomo ben Yitzhak, uh, the famous 11th century Talmudic scholar, he says that this means that in the Messianic times, when Mashiach comes to redeem this world, 
the, the, the righteous Jews who died will be brought back to life. They will be resurrected and they will sing again. So that's what he was talking about in this verse. So the idea is further illustrating the sequence of three scales. This is very, very interesting. The first scale, of course, we know what was the first scale. Aleph to Zion represents Kaved, the liver, right? The middle scale is from Chet to Nun. And that represents the heart, the Lev, Lev, heart. And the third scale um, from Samech to Shin, that re represents the Moach, the brain. The first scale elevates the physical body and world into this second higher scale, which in turn leads to the third. The order of daily prayers, actually, when our siddur, when we pray, we have a certain siddur translates to the to the word, comes from the same root as the word seder, which is order. So there's a certain order of our prayers in the morning that we move, that we go through a certain series of prayers to get through different steps in a certain order, and each order represents something. Um, so basically, this uh, the sitter, the morning blessings. When we when we say the the morning blessings, they lead into what, what we say psuka de zimri, the songs and psalms of praise, and that that leads us after we go through the songs and praise, it leads us into the re recitation of Shema. We say the Shema, and the Shema is of course one of our most important players. It, it's the, literally the declaration of God's unity that we say. And, and this in turn, this meditation, this deep uh, declaration of unity leads up and prepares our emotions for the final Shimona Esrei, which is when we take the three steps back, three steps forward. And we are as if we are in the Kodesh Kodesh, in the Holy of Holies, in the Beis Hamikdash, and we are literally standing face to face with God to pray. And we say the 18 benedictions, the Shemona Esrei, which rep this represents the intellect and the perfection of man. So it's actually interesting that um, Glazerson actually puts this in the book too, that if you take the first letters and i heard this also um and the balatanya quoted this also um that if you take the initials of kaved the liver the hebrew word the first letters of kaved the first letter of lev and the first letter of moach what does that spell it spells melech also you flip it around it could mean it could say kula so this indicates that perfection is obtained by unifying these three aspects. And the numerical value, the gematria of Melech is 90. Why 90? We know Mem equals 4, Lamed is 30, Chof is 20, which equals to 90. 90 is also the value of the letter Tzadik, right? Which represents the Tzadik, the righteous man, the the straight line between heaven and earth and he symbolizes purity so the lower the lower uh, numerical value there's a, also a lower way to cal uh, calculate numerical value we do it by basically adding the final number which 90 9 plus 0 is 9 and the number 9 represents the highest level being the highest numeral right between one and ten it's, it's the highest numeral so it's like the highest level and we can what do we we can deduce then that through the unification of these three components one may realize perfection and fulfillment um i wanted to touch note back to it crossed my mind as i said i want to share a quick little divart that um the balatanya he speaks about, you know, in the Tanya, he says, we speaks about how we have an animal soul, we have a godly soul. And he speaks about that, you know, most of us, most people in this world, naturally, the blood, like I said, it's it's preparing in, in the Kaved 
as it's getting pumped out of the left, out of the left ventricle of our heart, circulating, circulating through, through our, through our brain, and it's going like this through our body. That's how the blood circulates, right? So it's very interesting because that's that, that's Balatani says it's pumping at the left side of the heart, but um, it's brought down that if someone connects their mind to God through prayer, through meditation, through filling mitzvot, through contemplation, God's greatness to connecting to God through stopping for self and really connecting their mind, which the mind is the hub of the soul, you understand? And um, basically what happens is we activates that godly soul in his mind and as soon as the blood hits, it's as if Balatani says, then then he transfers it from pumping out the left side of his heart to the right side of his heart. It's pumping out of the right side of his heart. Then the godly takes over, not the animal soul takes over. The animal soul has needs, physical desires, lusts, everything. And that's what's driving the person most of the time. But as soon as the person's mind clicks and meditates on the holiness and the light of God, right away, he activates that as if he's pumping the blood out of the right side, puts that godly force takes over into his blood. The blood's no longer just holding the animal, it's pumping the godly soul through. And then therefore he becomes a chariot, like a chariot to, to God. So instead of it coming from the form of Kaved, Lev, Moach, which it goes the other way. It goes Moach, Lev, Kaved. And just like the, what I just said earlier, you take the first letter from Moach, first letter from Lev, and first letter from Kaved, you have Melech. And therefore, you become as if you are a chariot of the Most High, of the Infinite. Um, very interesting. If you take it the other way around, what do you have? Chelem, Klum, nothing. Destruction, but also I mean, Galatians brings a beautiful thing. He says it could be also kulam. It could be all. It could be unification. So it's not always a, uh, the bad thing. But we should strive to be chariots of God, God willing. Um, also, I wanted to conclude this share with uh, just a small, quick quote of uh, it's a it's very quick. Um, Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsberg has a beautiful Jew, uh, beautiful book. It's called The Wandering Jew. It has very few small, small little quotes that uh, always get my attention, you know? Um, so if we could do like one or two quotes a share, it's, it's really cool. It's very simple, very short. Um, oh, here it is. Let's see what this one is. God... God created us, put us here, and gave us free will. But we can abuse our free will. We should therefore ask God to look over us, protect us from making bad choices, and to help us make good ones. So walking down the street, one of the great Hasidic sages would constantly say, lead me along the true path. Another great Hasidic sage would say, simply protect me. Some sages fear slipping unconsciously into self-deceit. Others simply fear the power of their own evil inclination. What is essential is that we not lose consciousness for a moment that without God and His providence over us, we are lost. Every breath is a gift from God. Every step we make without tripping is a gift from God. So every person has a different perspective on reality his own unique angel every angel is like an angel sorry every angle is like an angel <laughs> little tongue twister every person has a different perspective on reality his own unique angle and every angle is like an angel just as God needed many angels to create the world he needs many angles understand also so some nice some neat 
Um, all our desires derive from three basic innates, derives instilled by us by the Creator, right? To live, to procreate, and to fulfill our purpose in life. The highest drive is to fulfill our purpose in life. After that, to procreate. After that, to live. Life is meaningless unless we try to procreate, right? Procreation is meaningless unless we try to fulfill our purpose in life. By misusing the free will we have been granted, we can per pervert all three in the drives, causing them to serve our e egocentric demands for immediate pleasure. The smallest and seemingly most significant creature has a purpose in creation. True sublime pleasure What's true sublime pleasure is the feeling of fulfilling one's purpose. And we all fulfill our purpose. He ends with this quote, Can you imagine a world without you in the center? Or without you at all? Try. The truth is, that if you're not there, I'll miss you. <laughs> Yo, anyways, till next week. Next week we will be doing... Um, we're still in part one. We'll be going through it a little slowly. Um, if anyone has any questions regarding um, any of the Sphero, the position of Sphero, they could send you graphs, pictures, charts. Um, there's many sources. Uh, Tanya and within the Kabbalah um, of how this, the, the system of Sphero work um, according to the Arizal to different others um, but uh, yeah God willing um, we should continue next week with part two of music in Kabbalah with the Hebrew vowels and um, it's only gonna get deeper it's only gonna get deeper God willing and um, it's only gonna get more and more beautiful as we start to unlock the mysteries of the universe through music and all of like I said all of God's speech was song was music it's all music all frequencies all of this whole world is all a bunch of frequencies each letter all of creation all the utterances this world is created through God's speech but his speech is the letters and each letters correspond to frequencies to notes to musical notes and we should tap into the song of creation. We should tap into the song of life and God willing merit to all tap, connect our minds and our hearts to really tap into true, true, true song with the final redemption of Mashiach Tzakein and Yerushalayim singing with the Levium in the base of Migdash speedily and soon. Amen. Sheikh now.